Nah, the big saurians eat those little grog dudes like slimy popcorn. So I'm gonna lather myself up with their guts! Woo! Grog hunt, let's go! Now in Reliance, I met a very, uh, we'll say colorful character named Chad, who is extreme and wanted me to engage in extreme activities with him. Chad wants you to witness this badass base jump! Get ready for it! Somehow, Chad, in his enthusiasm to jump off of a cliff, got stuck in midair. And I didn't really know how to complete this quest, except by getting out of this area entirely and coming back to it. Miraculously upon my return, Chad had finally landed on the ground which was a perfect time for me to revive him. I then got to witness Chad's ultimate stunt, attaching rockets onto a platform and launching him off to the extreme! By which I mean space? Pretty sure it was space. He died as he lived. Stupidly. Had myself an early Christmas when I got a legendary assault rifle from Jacobs. I finished off a camp of COV riding a log to the high ground. Received a little wisdom from Wainwright's father from beyond the grave. Damn, Nash! Oh, those gut rots chewing through me like a pig through a pile of apples. And could finally appreciate the magnificent gift that Chad had left me. You see, when I got his reward, it was just a blue pistol that looked like it was going to overheat very quickly and use a lot of ammunition. But the gun absolutely lied to me. The Hanging Chad is incredible because you can fire it basically endlessly and it never actually overheats. Plus, it doesn't use ammunition at all, so just keep firing away. I would absolutely not exploit this in the future. With a fire in my heart, but mostly in my gun, I assaulted a Jabber village to talk to King Louie. I then hit level 32 when I went to talk to a cyber dinosaur. But the best part came when I could pit the two against each other for my amusement. Gun monkeys and laser dinos? Let's do this. In this corner, King Bobo. In the other corner, Queen Iasaur. But oh wait, a new competitor enters the arena. It's a Vault Hunter! The competition is truly hotting up now! It was a bit anticlimactic when I had about a five second legendary hunt with a Mogwai. Beware the Jabber Mogwai, Vault Hunter! And don't let it get wet! <clears throat> well struck, Vault Hunter! Kalu, Kale, etc., etc. Back on the main quest, I found out that Ice T is now a teddy bear! Talk about method acting. I installed him on a medical bot. Balex had an unconscious coupling with his last girlfriend, and she is not taking it well. An army of jabbers came after us as she used a lot of grunts and squeaks to try and get them to do her bidding. And no, this wasn't annoying at all. That was obviously a lie. At first, Genevieve seemed like she would be pretty easy to take down. Her armor was no match for my Cloud Kill submachine gun, even though it was fairly underleveled at this point. But it was the giant energy balls of death that made this a real pain, because I constantly kept falling into fight for your life mode. By focusing my efforts directly on her, I was able to get her down to nothing and complete this very tricky stage. Alas, that was not the last we would hear from Genevieve as she took over Sanctuary 3. Hey, cutie idiots! I like your ship. Not as well armed as the family jewel, but I think I'll fit right in here once I make some modifications. I plugged Balex in, and we reprogrammed her ass. I handed Genevieve's AI off to Marcus. Yeah, I can't see that ending badly. Alright, now go put her in something where she can't screw up anything. Like a toilet. Or, or a broken toilet. Aha! I know just the one. Tannis got another one of her vault key fragments and showed off the progress she's making with that dance. Keep at it, the Tannis twerk is gonna replace Baby Shark any day now. Clay gave me a special pistol called a Rogue Sight that I could use to unlock doors for pretty much just this one portion of the game. 
After learning about the ambush that got the best of Clay's rogues, I went off in search of them to see if there's any signs of life. But first, a quick side mission where Tyreen tasked me with killing myself so I could get a sweet gun. Sellout is actually very reminiscent of Kill Yourself from Borderlands 2, where Jack asks you to jump off a cliff so that you can get some iridium. However, I decided to go on principles this one time and just destroyed the cameras instead. Too bad. I'll have to give that limited edition to one of my loyal followers now. Here's some cash, dipshit. I think I actually preferred the cash. Context, everything that I was currently in was actually far below my level at this point, so I doubt the gun would have been very useful in the first place. I aided Agent D with a quick change using my rogue sight. This section of the mission said that I was supposed to protect Agent D, although D did not seem to need any help in the first place. I found a really cool TDR pistol, which I would have absolutely used if I didn't have to then give up my hanging jet to do it, so I didn't. My spirit animal, who I named Bobo, in honor of that last monkey that I killed, led me to my next destination. I'm really not sure how Bobo was able to do so much physical damage, but I really was not going to complain that I was getting so much help from an energy monkey. I failed to kill literally everything from atop a crane, had to land, finished off the job, and realized that, oh, actually, I don't need to go back on top of the crane. Oh, that saves me a trip. That's cool. After selling off most of my inventory, I was ready to enter arena where you just know there's going to be a boss battle. And as soon as I wandered in, I hit level 34. Turns out the rogue known as Archimedes did not actually die in the firefight like we thought, but had become an anointed, like that Billy character that we met earlier. I turned him into a crystal, and then smacked him using my giant mech. Back on Sanctuary, I made my usual stop to check out SDUs. I got an up-close and personal look at Ava's revolutionary eye-rolling technology. And we were finally off to deal with Aurelia. Well, at least we would be if I didn't have to collect rocks for this side mission. Yeah, you heard me. I'm collecting rocks. What? We have problem with rocks? Rocks are delightful. They're some of my favorite people. Some of these brown rocks were brown for a completely different reason, by the way. The Jabbers were none too pleased that I stole their brown rocks. They even sent the king out for me. Uncle Ted had obviously had a rough day, so I decided to keep him company for a minute before meeting up with Wayne Wright and Alistair and finally confronting Aurelia. Pro tip, if you're dealing with the Queen of Ice, your best method is probably to try and find a fire weapon. However, my super fast shotgun that did radiation damage was very good at taking down her ice crystals that restored her shields. By just continually pummeling her with as much damage as I could muster, I never really felt like I was in any serious danger before she went down. Wainwright dared to ask me to solve basic puzzles. Can't you just tell me the answers? Oh! Oh, I do apologize. Are you hearing this, Alistair? The Vault Hunters lost all whimsical intrigue. And before long, I was headed off to yet another vault. Tannis greeted me at the vault entrance, at which point I hit level 35. Good, you made it! The Fragment Vault Hunter. But of course, before I went down there, one quick pit stop back up to Sanctuary so that I can unload my inventory and spend whatever money I need to on SDU upgrades decided not to buy anything from Randy, and headed for the all-too-familiar drop-off point, signaling that we were about to get into another boss battle. At first, it seemed like I would be dealing with just a bunch of Iridians, but that doesn't really follow the typical vault methodology. But then the real battle began as we are introduced to, to the monolithic Grave Ward. In addition to being an absolute damage sponge, the Grave Ward has a bunch of cheap tricks that he pulls off, including beam weapons and also tipping the entire playing field to one side so you fall off and die immediately. This is especially fun if you've been pelting him with bullets for the last five minutes. I say that ironically, of course. After the first time I died, I came up with a new strategy. In the arena, there is a crevice. If you hang out inside said crevice, you cannot be knocked off the playing field. You are more susceptible to take environmental damage, but chances are you'll be fine if you have a fairly good shield. This is really where the hanging chad came in exceptionally handy, because I could just hold down the trigger, aim it at Grave Ward, and keep on going. 
It's a long process and probably not as efficient as other methods to do this, but at least it works. Inside the vault, I collected another Iridian artifact, and finally, after all this time, unlocked my artifact slot. For the record, I already had gotten some artifacts from a golden chest, but at this point they were about six levels under my current, so I wasn't sure if they'd be all that useful, but hey, at least I had something to fill that slot, right? Tannis gets stolen yet again, thus we must go rescue her yet again. To do that, we have to find the Carnivora, which is back on Pandora. That's right, folks, we're headed on back to where it all began. But first, I was going to open myself up another golden chest because I'm level 35, and you know what? It's probably about time. A lot of my equipment was far underleveled at this point. Ellie gave me a mission revolving around Mouthpiece and his inevitable replacement. Remember Mouthpiece from back in the day? Yeah, good times. Them COV are trying to find a new mouthpiece. Let's stop them. Although I applied for the position, they found the absolute perfect candidate for the job. Well, I look and sound exactly like the last guy! Fine, I guess I'll just kill this one too. This mouthpiece was much more fortuitous than the last one, and he dropped a pretty sweet shotgun. I was pretty reluctant to get rid of the butcher that had served me so well this long, but the Mind Killer did do a considerable amount of damage, and I had gained quite a few levels since then. And it's kinda hard to argue with dubstep. The game then let me know that we had finally arrived on Pandora. Like for realsies this time. The last time we were here it was just pretext, now we're really here. I went about exploring the new areas that had opened up in the game, and wandered across what looks like the remnants of a birthday party. There was nothing to do here because it was obviously part of a quest that I hadn't gotten to yet. Out of nowhere I ended up getting a legendary pistol that actually was on my level and therefore very useful. Climbed way up to the top of the building where I found a red chest that had less impressive loot and finally made it to Roland's Rest, obviously named after the one and only Roland. May he rest in peace. <laughs> Burn all the wings! <laughs> Damn! I was really hoping for that stand mixer. Before continuing on with the main mission, <laughs> Tina and Brick needed me to run a few errands for them. My boy, my sweet baby boy bric a -brac, is stuck down there holding this door closed because the COV been sneaking up on Boomtown out of that tunnel, like hundreds of them, assholes. And I'm up here trying to help out by blowing up the whole thing, but Miss Boombottom's badunkadunk got stuck and I can't knock her down, so you gotta stop it. For those who don't speak Tina, what she needed me to do was slam down on the bomb that she put in a pipe. <laughs> With the help of Tina, Brick, and Mordecai, we were able to clear the COV out of Boomtown. And yes, I'm pretty sure they're the ones that named it that. After regrouping, the mission was complete, and I hit level 36. So, what are we gonna do in the next five levels? Will we finish the game? No! Actually, no! This is a really long game! Okay, so I needed someone to watch my fuzzy shanks, little hottie boy, Enrique the Fourth, and I thought I could trust my bestie pet skag with my sexy exy shiga, but now she won't give him back. 